The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me and advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin Tyler McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis Patrick McElroy. You'll get him next time, champ. <laughs> I'm hometown boy made good in 30 under 30 media luminary, Griffin McElroy. I kind of thought I was going to win. We love coming to Texas. Um, and Austin, playing fucking Austin, Candy Crush while we're doing Austin it. Austin has, almost, it almost feels like home to us now. Because we've played here <laughs> so many times. It's like a home to us. Like a second home. Austin's yeah. like a second it's home. It's like coming home for me. It's like coming it's home almost for like, us. It's almost like we own property here. <laughs> and all of our shit is here. It's, that's what it feels like. You know, you come, you see old friends, old family, old lovers. I thought it would be better. (laughs) Old lovers, I actually would love to explore. That's tough. That's tough. I've had a lot of old lovers. We saw... um, we saw Willie backstage. Saw, so, saw Willie. So cool to see Willie. We saw Willie. He welcomed us to his street. He welcomes everybody here to Austin City Limits. When you come in, Willie greets you at the door. Uh, he walks and I know, you, I know you're room. wondering, did they smoke us out? He's actually, guys, no. He's very cool about, like. He's, is, that, is that more of a character that he plays? He does really? plays a character. Yeah. He's like, please call me Bill. He was wearing a business suit. <laughs> He was wearing a, like kind of a like business jacket over a polo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and wild. he's all, he's also like thirty six years old. Yeah. yeah, that's the weirdest thing. He's also wearing a wire, and that's yeah. hard too. He leaned, he yeah, leaned over to thing. get me a starburst off our starburst table, and I saw it down his shirt. And first of all, I was like. I'm seeing down Willie Nelson's shirt. This is a once in a lifetime experience. <laughs> Mental picture, but also I saw the fucking wire. Yeah, I, I saw I, the wire. Willie. He does this funny bit though, <laughs> where like every five minutes, apropos of nothing, he'll just say, "I'm not a cop." Yeah, yeah, it's and cool. It, um, it's really good. He said um, one thing that was so cool backstage. He's like, "I think you guys are going to put on a great show tonight. Can I interest you in some marijuana, which is illegal within the state of Texas?" Just to clarify that, would you still like some marijuana? And he said, you, Travis McElroy, you would Travis you like some marijuana? Out loud. Travis McElroy is the one who said that. He's reaching into his pocket. He That's narrated a, a lot. He, yeah. Everything we did, he said, and now you're walking across the room. Um, speak into the flower, he said Speak into my, my huge comical flower. <laughs> and um, when I pulled out my gun, he was like, bumblebee, 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 bumblebee. <laughs> Just waiting and watching the windows. <laughs> I don't normally have a gun, but when you cross the bounds into Texas, they give you one. I, <laughs> they, they throw it in the open window of your car as you drive past the It was past in my luggage, actually, which is so weird. It wasn't, I didn't pack it. It was just in there with a an, an, <laughs> nice, some honey, some local honey. <laughs> uh, a, a now, brochure. one of those is for your allergies. Keep it straight. <laughs> Keep yeah. it straight. It's not the gun. Uh, well, we have returned to you, Austin, and like the Chilean miners, we have reemerged. From the ground up. Are the Chilean miners known for returning to places? <laughs> they went back. I mi- guys, can I be honest with you? I miss the fucking cave. <laughs> let's go. Let's go check it Where's out. Where's my wallet? Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back to the cave, Chilean miners, too. I don't have to take this. The squeak wall. This time they have to get back in. Oh, they put up some kind of tape over the front. What are we going to do? We have to go back. Hey, gang, this table's real wet, and I was the only other one to do a show out here tonight. That's a cool mystery. (laughs) Willie. So anyway, this is an advice show. Uh, We are not used to playing theaters where there are people in the round here. So if you feel like you're not getting Uh, This is actually a thrust. Yeah, it's a thrust. 
And the round would be behind us. So thrust. Okay, Jesus. Three God. quarters would be on. I know you guys teams. get frustrated because you have useless theater degrees. Fair enough. Oh, uh, you like seem like they just came in pretty useful, Griffin. Yeah. yeah. What uh, what what news story will you be writing about this evening's performance? <laughs> Uh, anyway, <laughs> why is James crying? Because he just got dunked on. Uh, so anyway, hi. If you feel like you're not getting service, please let us know Ugh. silently. Ew. Uh, I don't know how you'll accomplish that, but uh, here's the question. I get monthly massages as a way to de-stress and maintain sanity. Fuck yeah. I have seen the same person every month for a little more than a year. I noticed about three months ago while massaging my left hand, she seemed to avoid my pointer finger. Your pointer what? finger? My pointer finger. My punter finger. I thought... I'm going to kick it there. I thought, okay, that's weird. She moved to my right hand and massaged my hand and all five fingers. I thought maybe it was a fluke, and I went on with my month until the next massage, it happened again. And again, the time after. It always is my left hand and always the pointer. Is there something that could be wrong with my finger to cause such an aversion? I mean, it's a pretty normal finger, I think, and this is now causing uh, what should be a relaxing time into an anxious nightmare. Should I say something? What should I say? <laughs> Please help. That's from Sore Pointer in DFW. Are you here? Okay. Hi. What are you going to say? Hi. Like, hey, you forgot my finger. Yeah. <laughs> it, if you're ever wondering... Uh, no skipsies. If you're ever wondering if you should ask your uh, massage therapist the, for a specific part of your body to be deeply serviced <laughs> repeatedly, the answer is yes, <laughs> obviously. How else are they going to know? How else will they know what you want? There's a 0% chance it's a normal index finger, yeah. though, right? I'm think because I was thinking about it, and if you get the other hand piggies, right? Sure. And, and then um, you skip that one to go for thumb. Yeah. It's yeah. harder to skip it than to just include oh, it. Oh, maybe the massage therapist is super excited to get to that fucking thumb. Oh. <laughs> yeah, like, maybe it's not a bad pointer. Maybe it's an awesome thumb. thumb. They're on yeah. the pinky like, oh, God, this is the hand. I'm almost <laughs> there. Ring finger. Oh, <laughs> shit. Here, the thumb is over. Middle finger. I can't take it anymore. I gotta get to the fucking thumb. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is your thumb? It's a cool thumb, probably. Maybe they saw you do something with that yeah. finger, huh? <laughs> something evil. Do you legally have to tell us? This is a podcast. You have to tell us if you did something nasty. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do with your secret finger? I see you met my finger. <laughs> Um, What'd you do? <laughs> no, no, but really. <laughs> What'd you do? No answer. Okay. No answer. The crime mm. is unspeakable. Mm. Terrible crime. Maybe it's just, um, <laughs> maybe your massage therapist is just making sure you're paying attention. And they're like bummed out that you haven't mentioned the finger. Like, yeah, it's a test. I, on I you. clearly skipped their finger. This is how this is how these things start to erode, though. They skip the finger. They don't. You, you don't notice they skip two fingers, five fingers, the whole hand, the arm, the whole side of the body. Eventually, you're paying sixty dollars, and they slap you on the butt. <laughs> and that's the whole massage. And they say, "Good game, chief." Good game, chief. Thanks for the <laughs> sixty buckaroonies. That's been an hour. That's, I don't think it has. Do you know? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's 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 it could be accident though. It could your body your it's body funny. has uh, your body has so many parts. If you think about it, everybody, huh. everybody close your eyes and try to list out all of the parts of your wonderful body at the top of your lungs. As just loud as, as loud you, as you <laughs> can. No, no, good Christ. We can't say stuff like that. It's happened. It's happened by my math four times. What? That's not an accident. You yeah. don't miss the exact same part of the body over and over That's and over That's true. Again. If it was an accident, they would like miss like different, different things. Like, oh, didn't get my right foot that time. Is your left index finger maybe bad. somehow bad or the same exact color of the fabric of the massage table? That <laughs> do you have camo finger? Do you have camo one camouflage finger? finger? Because that would fucking do it. I'd... Do you have like a real shifty finger where they go for it and the, it, the finger just dodges out of the way? And they can't yeah, see maybe they're oh, trying oh. to rub the finger, but you instinctively pull it away because it's your weakest finger. <laughs> Did you lose your finger in a lawn mowing accident? Now you have phantom finger. Oh, 
shit. Do you Ooh. got Phantom Finger? Do you have Phantom Finger? If you if so, you have to tell us. You legally have to tell us it's a podcast. How about a Yahoo? Okay. I feel like we helped enough. This one was sent in by Graham Roebuck. Thank you, Graham. It's an anonymous Yahoo Answers user. I'm going to call them Scalver. Scalver asks, Why are we don't see knights in this day and age? Mm. I assume you mean like K knights. Yes, Travis. Not like, why don't we see beautiful starry knights? Homophones, good. Every time they show up as a joke. The homophone tree is a, is a giver. Ripe fruits on the homophone tree. Why are we don't see knights in this day in age? Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. we do. Okay. Okay. Griffin? Griffin, it's me, the cops. Do <laughs> You legally can't interrupt your brother for the next two minutes. Yeah, t- explain. So, Travis, maybe we do go on. I, okay, I am saying... Hold on, I'm looking at the timer. No bullshit. Go! I'm saying that maybe when you see on, like, a BuzzFeed, like, ah, oh, man climbs down side a bridge to save, like, a puppy on, like, the leg of the bridge or whatever it's called, the, the bridge holder, the man saved it. And you're like, oh, what well, well, good person. Just, and it's like, no, that person's a knight. And the person who put the dog there is an evil knight. <laughs> Okay, time in. I'm sorry. Um, I made it a good 20 seconds to my great credit. So, there were a lot of things in there that you kind of showed that you didn't know about. <laughs> uh, okay, the bridge one is a gimme. Yeah. Yeah, the bridge is a I gimme. I know that there's a br- bridge pillar. That's not right. Yep, yep, that's it. Uh, that doesn't mm, feel right. So, the bridge were they a knight? Did they, did they knight them? As a result of their actions, or were no. they knights before? They were knights before. Okay. That's why they had to save the dog. They were walking home from the store. They see the dog down there and like, ah, damn it. So and the then they e- had to save the goddamn dog. The evil knight on his <laughs> Google calendar <laughs> had a thing that said, get dog. And then another appointment right after that that said, place dog gotten in previous GCAL entry on top of bridge leg <laughs> and so hope, this hope other knight doesn't come along and ruin it. this evil knight walks under bridge and just like lifts a dog up puts it on top of the bridge leg and says ooh that that's good that's good <laughs> stuff <laughs> <laughs> That's good evil there. I hope you're happy, evil Jesus. I've done your bidding. <laughs> I am, Justin. <laughs> good job, Justin. <laughs> I'm proud of you again. Yeah. <laughs> so, how else does the dog get there? All right, so we've had a lot of fun here. I'm up here turning wine into clamato. <laughs> <laughs> Walk on water? No, I walked on your mom's rug. <laughs> the one that's just for guests. For just for guests, and I wore my shoes. <laughs> I I'm found, petty evil Jesus. I found Lazarus, and I killed him. <laughs> Some of the miracles of evil Jesus. Sure. <laughs> we would, oh, to be fair, killing someone isn't really a miracle. Yeah. <laughs> That's easy. They gave me five fish and three loaves of bread, and I scrummy down on that <laughs> shit. Yum, 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 yum. Okay. <laughs> Listen, we all went to Southern Baptist Church for a long time. We can list out all the miracles. <laughs> Don't mean to brag. Why the fuck aren't there knights this day and age? Travis's shit was not re- real, was not in the realm of realness. Well, there are, doesn't the, um, like, Elton John's a knight, right? Aren't there modern? Yes. I don't think he's the same kind of knight. No, he is. If they, if they, <laughs> no, he is. He is, he is, he If is. they go to war, the queen calls him up, it's like, all right, strap up. <laughs> all right. It's go Saturday time. Saturday night's all right for fighting. Yeah. Let's fucking do this. You made, a, you made a fucking promise. It's go time, Elton. You're going to space to claim Mars. Rocket Man. <laughs> Prove it. What other He's songs? so tough. You know, a lot of fun songs. You can use your father's gun so he'd... Uh, he had another song called my... <laughs> <laughs> Take a 
a crocodile with you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Sir Elton, this is the circle of life. This is the way these things go. From Lion King? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here's another question. Whenever I'm invited to someone's house to hang out, I always bring some kind of food. This feels like the polite thing to do in exchange for hospitality. The problem is, no one ever seems to eat what I bring. <laughs> My chips and queso go ignored, and I'm left picking at it by myself. <laughs> oh man, I didn't read that part. <laughs> That's so sad, okay. So my question is, how can I enjoy these snacks without looking like I just brought them for myself? Or, what can I do to get my friends to enjoy these snackums with me? That's from Eating Alone in Austin. It, this seems like a win-win to me. Either your friends enjoy your tasty meal or you get to eat like a pound of queso. Yeah. And, and are you, you... Okay. If we're all being honest with ourselves. Then let's, and let's. When you present the queso, are you really selling it? Are you like, anybody want this? Yeah, well, okay, this is for me. That's it. Anybody you know want this? Will, no. Who wants this stinky, shitty queso? <laughs> Nobody? No. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't, I didn't, see, like I said, I didn't see the part where you said you picked at it. If you're holding it in your arms the entire time. Come get time, some queso. Does anybody want some of this? Who wants to fucking wrestle me for queso? <laughs> Come in for a chip hug. Yeah. There are some parties that you bring food to. There are some parties that you don't. You can't just decide as a guest that it's a party everybody's bringing food to. Sure. The host won't know. If I was a host, okay. There's a lot of foods that you can eat without knowing the contents of. Queso is at the very bottom of the list. Yes. You start with queso, then you work up from there. If I'm the host of this party, I'm going to see that and walk over to my friends like, hey, I didn't, that's not my queso. <laughs> I don't know, um, I don't know where that queso is. <laughs> no. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't eat that queso. I don't know where it... They don't, in fact, I wouldn't even say I'm 100% sure it's queso. Yeah. It may not be queso. They don't make transparent cheese. What if, it's, what if they brought queso and no chips? <laughs> it's just... Surely you have chips somewhere. There's a whole bowl right there in front of you. Look at it, the gelatinous sauce. Enjoy this cheese flavor. Maybe it's just pre-queso. Like it has to be microwaved. Gross. Um, why is that gross? It is gross, though. No, you don't like cheese. It's raw queso is what you're saying. Um, did, 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 where'd you put it? Because <laughs> there's tables where food can go that it is communal, and it, but if you open the, if you put it under the sink and close it, no one's going to eat that queso. This, okay, this is an excellent point because if you walk in and you put it by like the front, the table by the front door where you keep like your keys and mail, if I walked in and saw queso there, I'd be like, well, that's for trick or treaters. Yeah. <laughs> They're, they are going to a queso party after this party. <laughs> right. That's not for this. No, no, that's for later. If I saw it on someone's bedside table, I'd be like, oh, that's their nighttime queso. Yes. Similar point. What are you serving it out of? Because if you're using it on like a, you know, something from the Martha Stewart collection, like a nice oak tray with polished metal handles, mm -hmm. now we're hopefully a bowl also, and not just sort of <laughs> loose queso slip sliding around there. Now we're talking. If you serve it out of a big toilet that you just got from the Lowe's, and you wheel in on a wheelbarrow or something, do you remember for a period in the 80s when everybody brought everything in shed spread country crock containers? <laughs> Is that just our family? I guess. I have a Yahoo here. Oh. It's from uh, Merritt Palmer. Thank you, Merritt. It's uh, Woo. Yahoo Answers user Al the Pal who asks, why isn't my fruits and vegetable blog getting views? <laughs> I made yep. it. Yep. Oh, oh dang. <laughs> no, oh, 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 beans. Oh, beans. <laughs> it's all beans that is. Ah, beans. I made a blog to talk about how I love fruits and veggies. Spent 150 to get it started. Sorry. Spent $150. Dollars? Dollars? Somethings to get it started. Beans. <laughs> <laughs> I made a deal with a guy for a cow. Spent 150 to get it started. I even made a recipe involving putting cheese on broccoli. <laughs> The ultimate sacrifice. 
<laughs> you poor cheese. <laughs> oh, I hate to do this to these good veggies, but it'll get the clicks. <laughs> I can't believe I ruined the broccoli for this. <laughs> Sleep now, my sweet my, green prince. My grandma's broccoli. <laughs> Don't look. It's been in my family for years. <laughs> it's, an air, where you are. it's an heirloom. <laughs> broccoli. An heirloom tomato. Yeah. yeah, sir. I am not getting supporters. How to get popular. <clears throat> they I spelled like, it super wrong. Alert. I'd like to say something. Yes. And it, it's this. S-E okra. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Justin can, didn't know how he was going to get that one in. I just wanted to say SE Okra. Thank you. Because SEO is search engine optimization. These people got it already, so you all don't listen, okay? Y'all go to the lobby, get yourselves a snack, and come back in 10. Okra. <laughs> Take it back. Hey, how the fuck did you spend $150 on your vegetables website? <laughs> My friend? Maybe it was in buying the vegetables. <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Have a vegetables website without any vegetables on it? Come on. I'm imagining somebody with a van of potatoes. <laughs> just How many potatoes can I get for this many? Just taking them and placing them around the modem like... <laughs> this is something. Go, 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 guys. Go, <laughs> go. Maybe they like vegetables too much. Screaming at the modem, I like these! These are good. <laughs> no, I guarantee this person paid, like, I don't know, the cool neighborhood kid, like, $150 to start them a vlog, like they said they yeah. would. And they're like, how's the website doing? And they're like, mm, not a lot of clicks. Not, not <laughs> I think I'm going to need another 20 bucks. Maybe even another $20. I can, maybe they like vegetables too much on the blog. Have you all noticed when you read a recipe for vegetables? Do you want to do this at the stand mic? No, they love vegetables already. Hey, do you ever notice um, in, in a, when you read an online recipe for vegetables, after they write 3,000 words about how supportive their husband is, you get, to, <laughs> you get to the part where they talk about vegetables, and it's always like, these taste exactly like hot butter popcorn. <laughs> it's like, um... I don't think so, actually. I don't actually think that. But it doesn't make me feel guilty for not enjoying vegetables as much as they do. Wait. So maybe this blog is like making people feel a little bit put on the spot. That if I would I would pay $150 for a vegetable website where like the headline of, of the recipe is like, do you want to make vegetables palatable? This is fine. This is it's as fine. close to good as it, like, but, it doesn't taste like hot butter popcorn, but it doesn't not taste like right, hot butter right. popcorn. You all are missing the fucking point of this artist's website. <laughs> They're not making a blog about how to make tasty vegetables. I made a blog to talk about how I love fruits and veggies. <laughs> <laughs> it is a little narrow, narrowly targeted. Hi, hail, hail, weary internet traveler. Greg again. This time... Asparagus. <laughs> love, love to eat it, but my pee. What? Ha ha ha. Little, little joke. Like and subscribe. Like it, I like this post as much as I like asparagus. Next week, kiwi fruits. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Like them. Like them. Like <laughs> How much? A lot. A lot. Tee hee emoji. Tee -hee. That's the whole post. Damn it. I used all my content for next week. <laughs> I've burned it already. <laughs> Anyway, support me on Patreon. Thanks. I, I need to recoup some expenses. <laughs> Necessary expenses. <laughs> Necessary right. expenses. Kiwis don't buy themselves. That's right. Not yet. <laughs> Read on. I, I'm, Jeff, I'm Jeff Bezos, and these are my new self-buying kiwi fruits. <laughs> Why isn't anyone liking this blog? This is when I started to compete with Amazon. All right. All right. I don't know why I said it all right. It's your turn to read a question. I am a first-time plant dad. My hanging ivy has lived for about a year and a half so far. I'm not sure how because I've not changed its soil since buying it. All right, I was waiting to see what the reaction to that was because I don't actually I heard know no if gasps. that's... Yeah. I actually don't know if that's something or not. <laughs> Can I get a quick... Actually, before you move on... Can I get a quick round of applause if that's something? Thank okay. you. Okay, that's, that wasn't okay. enough for it to be a Wait, thing. Wait, now stop. Can I get a quick round of applause if you have no fucking idea? Okay, perfect. So, it sounds like it's something. 
if I add those two together, I think that's literally everybody in here. Okay. Uh, I've not changed its soil since buying it, and I often forget to water it. Potting soil is expensive and difficult to move when you walk everywhere. Uh, they put that in parentheticals. Does not address the watering issue, but okay, <laughs> fine. That's fine. Also, water is expensive? I have nothing. No. Uh, however, on my route home, uh, they are building a bowling alley. A bowling alley with a few trees and planters. My question is, how do I steal some of that sweet brown stuff <laughs> for my struggling plant son, Dirk Bandit in DFW? Are you worried that someday your plant will find out? <laughs> I feel dirty. <laughs> well, well, well. Uh, hey, are you here? This is the best fucking short story I've ever read in my entire life. When the bowling alley showed up, who here was like, okay? Twist. Are you this taking the plant bowling? Fuck yeah. <laughs> There's a, isn't there, there a Denzel Washington movie where like his kid is sick and so he like robs a hospital? To, like say, this is like that, but the stakes are like down here. Way lower. Did, Way lower. did you could? I mean, here's an option. I mean, steal the dirt. Don't steal the dirt. You only go around once. But one option would be to bring your plant son back to the bowling alley and plant them there. If you love something, you gotta let it go. And maybe this is you. Clearly are, if you'll excuse me, a delinquent plant parent. <laughs> I understand the soil expense issue, fair enough. The watering thing is hard to get past. <laughs> yeah, but maybe I, there's a bowling alley employee out there with a heart of gold and a thumb of green <laughs> who can step in where you have so clearly fucked up. I, yeah. I would also say if I was a landscaper who was like putting stuff in and I saw someone doing it, it's like, hey, what are you doing? And they're like, I am planting a plan here. I'd be like, well, that's 10% less work for me to do. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sounds great. Excellent. Thanks for the help. Appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I mean, don't steal the dirt. <laughs> if you. That you, would be the worst thing you go to prison for, no, by the way. No, it's not you wouldn't go to fucking prison because it's dirt and you can't own that. God owns it. But also... It, we won't watch Pocahontas. It is, it is weird, weird how if it's dirt is on the floor, it's like, ugh, God, clean it up. If you put the dirt in a bag, that'll be $8. Like, why? Yeah, it's good not, point, guys. You wouldn't go to jail for it. What would happen would be w way worse... The stigma associated with somebody seeing you rob dirt <laughs> is some next level shit. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, and why? <laughs> Taking a, 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 a sample. We've had there reports in the area of ash beetles. <laughs> <laughs> You're and doing a really good job at this. I'm testing this at home. <laughs> <laughs> no. Do Wait, you need that much lab, for the test? My lab. My, lab, my you, home lab. Do you really need that much dirt for your test? You're taking a good wheelbarrow full there. Hey, listen. If you are an expert on ash beetles like me, Dr. Ash <laughs> Beetle Steen, then you can do the rigorous testing. <laughs> Well, that all tracks. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, another suspicion here. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, Anything I can do to help? Do you need any money? I just want to walk away. <laughs> <laughs> Are you peeing your pants? It's a different test. It's it part keeps of the, the Beatles away. It's a different I'm test. It's a base level for the pH balance. I have to... It's the control. Um, hey... Why are they building a bowling alley? Hey, yeah, wait, huh? <laughs> it's 2018. <laughs> All right. I guess people here want more bowling alleys. I'm not saying it's bad to have more bowling alleys. I'm saying, aren't there enough bowling alleys? I, to be fair, we do come from a city in West Virginia where there's at least two empty waiting for someone bowling alleys. No, no, no. They closed down Colonial Lanes. Didn't you hear? But it's no. still there, right? 
I mean, yeah, you can fucking bust in the windows. And no, go but that's bowling. what I'm saying is you don't need to build a new you bowling can, alley you if you clear, want to own a bowling alley. You can clear away some of the ivy and bowl in there, I guess, if you, you want. You can have Last of Us bowling. But if I say, like, this is my bowling alley now, I feel like it is. Uh, do you would like... Do, do you, do you would like a Yahoo? I'm becoming a Yahoo answer. Um, yes. Unless you want me to just... The fucking audience even knows you're not going to let me get through it. <laughs> Throw your clothes onto the bed. Oh, okay. And wait for me by the tree. I'm going to swing, sing jingle bells to your head. That's a Christmas to me. That's a Christmas to me. That's a Christmas to me. Making love in the light of a tree. <laughs> okay, I was going to ask. That's a Christmas to me. Okay. Pass me a glass of that mold wine. 20 years since we've been like this <laughs> and yet it feels oh so fine we're under the mistletoe let's kiss that's a Christmas to me that's a Christmas to me you and me and a little bit of holly that's a Christmas to me. So this is a segment. This is a holiday special. That was a fucking journey. Yeah, I want to explore, before we get into this great segment, That's a Christmas to Me, let's explore what happened in that song. Because I was, I was a little thrown at yeah. the beginning when you said throw your clothes out of the bed. Yeah. So you first and take off I'll your... see you by the tree. Yeah. Paul, Paul, I need another drink. Paul, if you can hear me, Paul, I need another Let's drink. Let's throw Help our me. clothes. Let's throw our clothes not just on the floor as we prepare to make love, but do scoop them right under the bed. By the way, we haven't done this in 20 years. Thanks, Paul. It's been 20 years since we've been like you don't this. Have to, you, don't have, you don't have to uh, uh, Tom Cruise and cocktail it for me. I'll just blend it myself. Thanks, old friend. Okay. I'm just going to ride it out. Yeah. So in the segment, in the segment, that's a Christmas to me. Travis, don't look at the iPad. Don't look at the iPad. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. You wouldn't be able to tell. Um, in the segment, that's a How Christmas doing, to Griffin? me. Great. I read... The description of two Hallmark Christmas films that are real and one that I created in my mind's eye. Now, if you are a listener of My Brother, My Brother, and you're not familiar with this segment, it's because it's one episode old, so don't worry that you've missed a lot. Technically speaking, it's one day old, but it's only a holiday segment, so i got to get a lot in. Yeah, he can't do this and say, I don't know, any other month sure, of the fair. year. Right. Okay, so here we go. And by the way, we're going to take a poll. If you actually know the answer, please don't vote, because it will spoil. Okay. Unlike a lot of elections, if you know the right thing, don't vote. <laughs> First film is Switched for Christmas. <laughs> switched? Switched for Christmas. Not a switch for Christmas. Just because, just because they are identical does not mean these twins even like each other. Strange twin sisters played by Candace Cameron Brewer. Get together, that's right. Say that last name one more. Candace Cameron Brewer. Okay. That's Candace Cameron's new name, Candace Cameron Brewer. Estranged twin sisters get together for an obligatory pre-Christmas lunch a year after their mother's death. Mm -hmm. Sorry, both women are unhappy and frustrated with their own lives, though not close. Each is envious of the other's life. It's a nasty mm. Christmas movie. What a twin, what's a twin do but to take advantage of this? And who would be the wiser? They do what any identical twins in need of new outlooks would do. They swap lives until Christmas Day. That's a fucked up thing to say about identical <laughs> twins. And by doing so, each woman discovers the true meaning of her life and gains a deeper perspective and appreciation for what she already had. That's Switch for Christmas. That starring... sucks so bad. The plot of it sucked and the way it was written was quite bad. So I hope that one wasn't yours. Also, I would say, if that movie is real, yeah. 
Yep. 100% chance there's a scene with a husband involved of like, hey, honey, let's make love tonight. Oh, no, it's my twin sister's husband. And that's in there, right? Oh, also, no disrespect. But nobody has ever said, we're making a movie. I would love to get Candace Cameron in it twice. Uh, How is that supposed to be no disrespect? It's yeah. pretty disrespectful. <laughs> Apparently <laughs> disrespectful. Can I move on? Yes. yes. The next film is called A Shoe Addict's Christmas. <laughs> As Christmas approaches, Noel, played by Candace Cameron Bure, <laughs> is at a crossroads in her life when it seems that love, a connection with her father, and her dream career are out of reach. When she stays late at her job in a department store on a snowy Christmas Eve, she accidentally gets locked in after closing. She isn't too concerned about the prospect of spending the night in the store until a quirky woman appears out of nowhere in the shoe department and tells Noelle that she's her guardian angel. Soon, Noelle finds herself revisiting Christmas's past, present, and future. She must work with her new neighbor, a handsome, Christmas-loving firefighter, <laughs> to plan the annual... <laughs> you describe yourself in three descriptive terms? If they work oh. together. There's a fucking Christmas tree in that apartment. No! <laughs> Not like this, Jesus. Not like this, Jesus God, who I love for Christmas. <laughs> the annual Christmas charity gala. Will visiting the holidays of yesterday and tomorrow help Noelle take new chances and discover the true spirit of Christmas? <laughs> and in realizing the only thing standing in her way is leading a fulfilling life as herself? Will the love she has longed for all her life be the best surprise gift of all? And that is A Shoe Addict's Christmas, starring Candace Cameron Bure and, as her guardian angel, Gene Smart. Hmm. Hmm. Last film. Oh. A Tailor-Made Christmas. New York fashion designer Grace Preston, played by Candace Cameron Bure, <laughs> isn't thrilled about spending the holidays in her tiny hometown of Charity Falls, Wisconsin. But when the dress her stepsister Anna's Christmas Eve wedding is lost in shipping, Grace is guilted into crafting a last-minute replacement by their overbearing mother, played by Mary Margaret Hume. You remember, of course, from Dawson's Creek. Ah. Grace is making the best of a bad situation until she meets the best man at a pre-wedding luncheon and learns it's none other than her high school boyfriend, Brad Phillips. After a college football injury ended his dreams of going pro, Brad turned his attention to TaylorMade, a charity that provides handcrafted business uh, sorry, handcrafted business attire to homeless men and women heading to job interviews. Brad is kind, caring, and intelligent, but he's also put down roots in Charity Falls. As Christmas Eve approaches, Grace must choose between a life with Brad and following her dreams in the fashion industry. Fuck. These are three films. I can't fucking believe one is not real. One. <laughs> Those are all so good. They're, they're really all good. a Christmas to me. I mean, not good. No, they're quite bad. Okay, listen. They're all a Christmas to me, but sure. I want to know which is the one I, that is a Christmas to me. Should we take audience poll first? No, I want debate? to hear you two okay. before they bias you. The first one switched to Christmas has to be real because I know there's more than one of that exact movie that exists out there. So if there's more than one, this is probably among the crew. Uh, mm-hmm. I have my guess. But if I Travis. found two Candace Cameron Bure movies, boy, a good punchline would be a movie with two of her in yeah. the same film. Uh, that would be a good punchline. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm okay. I've got mine. I got mine. Okay. I'm gonna shoe shoe addicts Christmas. Mine is also shoe addicts Christmas is fake. Shoe addicts Christmas is fake. Uh, let's I think get there a quick... was a lot. I think there was a lot of diversion in there, like you saying, "Oh, and it's got a Jane Jane." Okay. Uh, we're gonna take a quick poll from the audience. Uh, the first, we're just gonna do just by cheers. Uh, first film was Switch to Christmas. Round of applause if you think that's fake. Okay. Second film was A Shoe Addict's Christmas. Round of applause if you think that's fake. Okay, thank you. Our third film was A Tailor Made Christmas. Uh, round of applause if you think that's fake. Okay. Mm. The film that I made up, well, actually, Sydney made up mainly, but I helped, is uh, A Tailor Made Christmas. God. Is a fake. Oh, fuck. Switch for Christmas is real? Switch for Christmas is so fucked because one of the women has two children. I can't deal with these idiots. <laughs> I can't deal with these idiots at Christmas. Bye. <laughs> Bye. I'm living at my sister Deborah's apartment and loving it. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, idiots. Mom's gone. Bye. Have, Enjoy have my kids for Christmas. Have you and Sydney thought about pitching movies to the Hallmark Channel? She's got a gift, honestly. This, a lot of this is like dictate. You, know <laughs> you know that scene where Salieri's like throwing the music around? Like, how does he do it? That's me typing these down when Sydney's like, and then Candace Cameron Bure is like, she was. This woman was, the, the mother of my children was dictating scenes to me that would be in the movie if she filled it out to a spec script. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, there would fully be a scene where her uh, company is like, good news, Bloomingdale's loves your new collection, but they want to see more by New Year's Eve, so we need you back here immediately. And she would then have to choose. The name of the city was Charity Falls, right? Charity Falls, Wisconsin, yeah. That should have been the giveaway that, right No, there. I actually I thought that was so hallmark yeah. that it was about a charity bro, called Taylor Mark. Bro, it's not a giveaway. The, the woman in the last film is called Noelle. Yeah. Like, it's not a giveaway. It's They're tough. all like this. Half the towns in these fucking movies are Christmas. Christmas town, Christmas city, <laughs> Christmasburg. <laughs> I live in Christmas Eve town. <laughs> Hello, party people, and welcome. Yeah, I'm, thank you for listening to this oh, episode. Travis. Oh, you've heard, you've heard Travis. so much of it already. Oh, help me, Travis. La oh, no, Griffin, what's wrong? I busted my gut la laughing at this great episode and all the great jokes that we had at Austin, Texas. I've heard um, of it, yes. It's my favorite, and so now we are going to tell you about our sponsors the tragic thing is, I've clicked away from where the list of the sponsors is. Well, so can I say, Griffin, if um, you have injured yourself, might I recommend laying down on this Casper mattress? No, no, I gotta go to the hospital. Did you not hear me? My tummy busted open, Trav. I got, I got seps sepsis. Because I have found that when I am injured and want to rest and recuperate, well, there's no place better to do that than my Casper mattress. Okay, this is true. The other day, and listen, I'm not a doctor. The other day, my hand hurt really bad. I think I'd injured it signing posters and books and stuff at the Austin God, show. So fucking bougie. And I lay down, I took a nap half hour. When I woke up, my hand was completely healed. So I attribute that to- Christ, Christ-like these mattresses are. That's what I'm saying. They're the holy ghost of mattresses. Oh, uh, that's great. Thank you. And you can check them out now. They offer affordable prices because Casper cuts out the middleman and sells directly to the consumer. Casper brand mattresses combine multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep service with the right amounts of both sink and bounce. It's eight sink and 14 bounce. That's, That's it. The, the well, correct Griffin, ratio. you gave away a oh, shit. Okay. secret family recipe. And you can be sure of your purchase with Casper's 100-night risk-free sleep on it trial. So get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash brother and using the promo code brother at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Can I tell you about some stomps? Yes, please. Can I tell you about a little bit of stomps? Please tell me about stomps. Listen, it's the holidays, and around the holidays times is when you must use stomps the most on your boxes and your letters. To Santa. To Santa Claus. He if loves you, receiving your letters. If you he, don't put stamps on him, though, he shreds them. He shreds them, you get put on the naughty list, which is a just a... You know, a short walk to the hell list. Yeah, and also the no-fly list. Add the no-fly list. But if you put it on the, if you put the stamps on the letters to Santa, you get TSA pre-check, just That's like right. that. Mm -hmm. So uh, stamps.com is great. It's very convenient. I hate leaving the house for virtually any reason, and stamps.com is there for me because they have the you know technology that they give to you so that your house technically becomes a post office. You got to be careful because people are going to come to you wanting to yes. buy Wanting to buy stamps. Yes. And I think that's illegal for you to open up a secret stamps resale market. So maybe I shouldn't even mention that possibility but in this, I, an advertisement for stamps. It is convenient, though, because your bread box will become a P.O. box. So that's it's, nice. It is nice. Um, anyway, stamps.com can help save you a bunch of time during the holiday season. You can buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter, any package, any class of mail using your own computer and printer. Then the mail carrier picks it up, and you don't have to go to the post office. You're going to save a bunch of time. You're going to save a bunch of money. Stamps.com is the best gift you can give yourself this holiday season you can enjoy the stamps.com service with a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus postage and a digital scale without long-term commitments go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in my brother all one word that's stamps.com enter my brother this message is for michael and it's from rebecca michael felix says daddy hi 
which in Bubba speak means that we both love you and your poopy butt bones a whole Don't, lot. Don't, hey, come on. I, it's what it says. Listen, some of us suffer from poopy butt bones. <laughs> and you don't gotta make it sound jovial. That was a sad sentence, Travis. Love you and your poopy butt bones a whole lot. Thank you. Thanks for letting me harass you all the time, you sweet birdie. Now, please remember to Febreze the bathroom when you come out. I mean, there's a lot truly, in there. If, yeah, a lot about his poopy butt bones and sort of the issues that uh, Rebecca has with them. But I, I guess now Michael's going to take that stuff a little bit more seriously. But uh, who is Felix? Who is Bella? Who are these characters? Don't matter. Here's one for Lewin, and it's from Taylor and Ginger, who say, Happy 22nd birth from your... Whoa, 22... <laughs> That's it. You beat the Duggars, right? That's a lot of births uh, from your two best buds. We've spent 16 of your birthdays together, but I'm still sorry I missed the first five. And Ginger, the first 16. You're a strong, beautiful, bespectacled bear and one smart cookie. Thanks for sticking with us in life and D&D, even though you forced Ginger to flirt uh, with you as a Southern fantasy sheriff. We love you. Uh, Been there, done that, huh? Wait, was Ginger the fantasy sheriff or was Lewin? I think all of them were. I think they're doing a Deadwood, but they're um they're all playing the handsome man. Oh, you know, yeah. Him, I him. just think I would like to see this game where a fantasy chef was like flirt with me. Come Deadwood on. was Deadwood was just sort of a bunch of nasty men looking very sort of bedraggled. But then the one handsome man does come to town, and it just goes around being all handsome. I haven't seen all of the show, but that's and Deadwood. What I remember. Are you talking about Timothy Amundsen as the handsome man? I'm talking about Timothy Oliphant as the uh, oh. handsome man. So anyway, this is we for can nobody. that later. Sure, and Travis is going to read the last one. Uh, this is for Gabriel, and it's from Kelly. Happy all events and holidays that fall in the first half of 2018. Well, we missed that. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah, yeah, yeah. no one else I would want to share this crazy life with, whether it's going to Taiwan, a train trip to Texas for the Cotton Bowl, or yelling at the Lions every Sunday. I love you more than anything. Oh, no, they got Lions outside their house, Griffin. I know, but they've got the, they read the right books, because yelling at them's the best way to fight the Lions. You got to yell, and you got to make yourself look big. Yeah, and you got to yell stuff like, I hate, I hate Lions. I hate oh, them. Lions smell like poopy butt bones. Can we not? I'm so sorry, Griffin. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed these Jumbotrons because they are the last. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they are the last of the Jumbotrons. Uh, yes, we're changing shit up, and it's weird that we're doing this without Justin here. Um, but yes, we are going to stop doing Jumbotrons both on My Brother, My Brother, and Me and Adventure Zone. We're going to continue doing them on our other shows um, because the reality of the situation is that uh, selling them on our shows has become a very, very... Um, un, untenably difficult and competitive and uh, disappointing process for virtually everybody involved. Um, and yeah, uh, we're, we're, we've, we've enjoyed doing them and it's been a, like a fun way to interact with y'all as we keep going on. But now we have lots of fun ways to interact with y'all. And, and so uh, we are putting them to bed. Now the, uh, the money zone is going to be a little bit tighter, which I'm sure a lot of people are going to be also excited about. Um, and yes, big programming update. Uh, um, also, thank you all uh, for listening to the show. You won't hear us again. Um, we have some big things coming up this week, so make sure you pay attention. Oh to shit! The, yeah, yeah, dude. To the my brother, my brother, and me Twitter account, so you don't miss it. Uh, See, for real, we say shit like that all the time. Is it's going to be a pretty big week uh, again? I can't believe Justin's not here. Yeah. So uh, make sure you keep an eye on that because there's some stuff coming up, and you can pre-order the Adventure Zone graphic novel at theadventurezonecomic.com. We did a lot of this shit at the I end know, of the live show. Let's just get to back to it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, uh, yeah. Let's check. Keep your eye locked on the tweetos, and we'll we'll catch you later. Hi, this is Rachel McElroy. Hello, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is wonderful. It's a podcast that we do as uh, we ma- we are married. And how's the ad going so far? Because I think it's going very good. <laughs> we talk about things we like every week on Wednesdays. One time Rachel talked about pumpernickel bread. It was so tight. You cannot afford to miss her talking about this sweet brown bread. We also talk about music and poems and, you know, weather. There is one... Yeah, weather? <laughs> one time Rachel talked about Baby Beluga, the song, for like 14 minutes. And it just really blew my hair back. <laughs> so check us out on MaximumFun.org. It's a cool podcast with chill vibes. Amber is the color of our energy, is what all the iTunes reviews say. <laughs> they will now. How about a Yahoo answer? Yeah. 
This one was sent in by a lot of people. Thank you, everybody, who, who got a hand on this ball. It's from Yahoo Answers user No Summertime, who asks. Oh. I'll wait for Justin. <laughs> Why the hell don't I like potato salad? I love potatoes, baked, french fries, mashed, hash browns, grilled side dish things. But the potato salad tastes like ass to me. <laughs> WTF is wrong with me. It angers me and wants me wanna, makes me want to punch someone in the face. <laughs> it's the mayonnaise. <laughs> Justin says mayonnaise. I buzzed in first. <laughs> it's the mayonnaise. Mayonnaise tastes bad. And things like that, it's the mayonnaise. <laughs> The reason you don't like it is because mayonnaise is a weird thing to bind something with, and the reason you don't like it is the mayonnaise. Come yeah. at me. You didn't leave, didn't leave us much air to breathe in the bit zone. Maybe it's the mayonnaise. Hey. Waka, waka, waka. <laughs> I mean, I do want to pitch this from Yahoo Answers user. <laughs> Who says, there are lots of ways to make potato salad. The one you have tasted probably wasn't very good. No big deal. Punching someone because you don't like potato salad is a bit over the top. The only one at fault here is you for not liking it. Punch yourself if you must. Anyway, that's my new this, SNL character, the guy that takes Yahoo answers literally. Well, the uh, question asker really liked it because they decided that this was the best answer. There's a, there's I a, love the idea of like tasting some food and be like, oh, I don't like this, like... Don't blame that on anyone but yourself. Yeah, I will say that Yahoo Answers user No Summertime does not like potato salad. They do like a slice of humble pie. Because that's what they were served up. <laughs> they gobbled it down and said, you're right. You know what, you're right? You're that right. was over the top. I'm I the should ass. not. I'm the <laughs> asshole. <laughs> I'm the one who tastes like ass now. It could be the coldness of the potato. You don't eat a cold potato most of the time, huh? It's probably the mayonnaise. It's just there's nothing else. It's just that it it's definitely the mayonnaise. It's probably the mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is like a fish song. Now, hold on. Uh, listen really carefully, because this part won't be in the show. Because it won't be funny, but it's true. Mayonnaise is like a fish song. If you listen to um, uh, uh, Kill Devil Falls, right, or Free or any other great fish track on the album, and it's three minutes and 30 seconds long, you're like, that was great. Great song construction, great recording, fantastic. You see it live. It's 30 minutes long. That's enough, thank you. If you have a little bit of mayonnaise on a thing, ooh. <laughs> ooh, yeah. I don't, I don't remember sandwiches being this wet. Ooh. <laughs> it's fun. Welcome to the, welcome it's to the. It's not like sloppy sloppy, but. Ooh. Ooh. It's, a, it's a little bit wetter than it's I remember. All right. Bit. It's a little bit indulgent. Ooh. 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 Uh, and then there's like a line. And it's the seven minute mark of the Kill Double Falls you know, Sioux City Falls, Iowa version of the song. They've got them all on Spotify. And uh, you listen to it for hey, 17 quick, minutes, and it's so like, that's enough yeah. mayonnaise. Hey, Juice, are you real into fish? Because what the fuck, bud? <laughs> you got to tell us this shit. It was improvisational comedy. It wasn't. You knew a lot about you fish, You knew a friend. lot about fish. <laughs> all right, here's the tip-off that I pulled out on my ass. I was talking about Kill Devil Falls, and I said, Sioux City Falls, Fine. Iowa. Okay, okay so okay. That, was a, that was made up. Anyway, after too the, much after mayonnaise. After the whole Jimmy Buffett thing, I don't know who to trust anymore. Okay. <laughs> I work at a local coffee shop, and over the last couple of months, we've had a regular customer who comes in, sets up his personal home office in the shop, and very loudly takes phone calls for his dental practice. I recently noticed that he has four cell phones on him at all times and uses all of them to take these business calls. Should I be concerned? Is he involved in some sort of black market dental operation? That's from Leave My Teeth Alone. Uh, being a dentist isn't like writing a screenplay, right? That's not like something <laughs> you can't just like post up at a Starbucks and do it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> you know what? What do I know? Yeah, it's I don't 2018. Maybe they're an at-home dentist. Thank you, yes. They do house calls, they'll come, do you have a chair that reclines? And a good bright flashlight. <laughs> and 
teeth hooks. I don't really have anything. I don't have any. Do you have a toothbrush? <laughs> you have a toothbrush. This is how I know you guys aren't dentists. Because you can't just buy a dentist store and then go in there. <laughs> and go in there with your chair and the light and the metal thing and open the door and say, I'm ready for teeth. Yeah. And then expect people to go. You have to build your client base through networking and And Patreon. And Patreon and entrepreneurship. And you have to build your client base before. You have to say, would you be interested in a value priced dentist who's just learning and cutting his teeth, if you will. But I won't, hey, hey, hey. But I won't cut your teeth because I've only been in dentist for a week, but I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. I know you don't. I don't know much yet. 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 I don't don't think I'm supposed to cut your teeth. I do know this. Teeth are mad hard. I don't think you can (laughs) cut them if you try. I've heard a lot about drilling, and I plan on YouTubing that later to see if I can find some tutorials. I went to Home Depot. The drills seem pretty big. So, (laughs) If I'm being honest, I wouldn't want that. If you know of a... This is going to sound silly, but like a dentist depot... (laughs) <laughs> that would be fun to be a, uh, have the dentist come to your house for the fourth time and say, good news, got my own place. <laughs> you can come visit me there from now on. Yeah, I've I got would, lots of old highlights magazines. That would be the day I stopped going to that dentist. Like, what would be better than a dentist who comes to your house? Just, a dentist who doesn't come to your house. <laughs> Fair. I'll grant you that. Um, so we have some audience questions. I want to keep talking about this fucking dentist. Are you serious? Yeah, we can't leave this guy alone. Um, okay. For okay, let's, for a lot of mostly because what he's doing is illegal, so we should keep an eye on him. What? what um, okay, the four cell phones. Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> One's for his mistress, probably. Yeah. And then the other three we can talk about. The I I feel like he's probably calling other people and saying like, "Hey, this is your dentist." <laughs> um, I, um, I've got arrested for getting drunk on the job, and um, I don't think I'm going to be able to do it. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to teeth you. Drilled, uh, drilled right clean through someone's whole head, so <laughs> you should probably find a new dentist anyway. I'm, I'm scared go. of teeth now. I'm really scared of teeth. I got a phobia now, and yeah. I got to go. Bye. They have one phone that they call other dentists with, and they're like, hi, this is Timothy Dentist, and I was asked, I'm doing a book report about dentistry. Can you tell me where you get your tools and also how you do every part of your job? (laughs) (laughs) (coughs) No, maybe that, maybe their dental practice is their dental middleman, and somebody calls them that you got it, and then they call a dentist, and then they just hold the phones together. (laughs) Are you guys done yet? Okay, sorry. For ten, for ten minutes, he sits in the corner and makes his phone 69, and I don't know why. <laughs> What's that? Oh, uh, you need an orthodontist? I got a third phone. <laughs> Hold on. Let me put uh. you on the party line. <laughs> okay, so we will, well, let's do audience questions. Yes, we have, uh, we have some picked out. We've do, we're doing it a new way probably since the last time we were here in Austin. Yeah. We're going to call some names and some seat numbers. You're going to come on down to the microphones. Can we get the spotlights <coughs> down on the microphones in three, two, okay. Hey, what's up? Hello. <clears throat> hey, who Hello. are you? I'm Brooks. Hi, Brooks. Hey, Brooks. Hello, Brooks. So uh, my question is, my boyfriend keeps on going into the pantry and grabbing handfuls of fettuccine <laughs> un- uncooked I would hope he's not grabbing handfuls of cooked fettuccine Brooks in your pantry no. and eating them raw and he keeps calling them chips okay how do I make him stop is your boyfriend here yeah you're a monster <laughs> Words mean things. Does anybody remember, <clears throat> I haven't been to Olive Garden in many moons, but they do have like a little like fettuccine bottle that you can just grab them out of and shoot. Hold on, was this a prank you guys pulled on me when we went to Olive Garden as kids? <laughs> no, stop, everybody shut up. <laughs> do they give you fet- raw fettuccine to chew on in the lobby of the Olive Garden? <laughs> you s- fucking yeah. bastards. The Prestige! (laughs) (laughs) 
and now you have IBS. I did. We got him. <laughs> what I need you, Brooks, we'll get back to you. What I need you two to understand is that was not the only time I went to Olive Garden. <laughs> there were... <laughs> did, were there never employees around? Like... <laughs> I, I wanting to seem like an authentic metropolitan <laughs> diner, would always grab the fettuccine and walk over to my friends like, mm, yeah, I'm a little, a little peckish. <laughs> Griffin, I fucking a... can't believe, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe literally I'm finding out in the worst imaginable <laughs> venue. Speaking as a former Olive Garden employee, there is, if I saw a little kid eating fetti- raw fettuccine, the odds of me stopping them are negative 1,000%. Okay, Brooks. Brooks. Yeah, so I'm going to sit this one out, Brooks. <laughs> Brooks, is it possible that your boyfriend has been laboring under the same delusion as my brother for all these years? Oh, wait, wait they sell this for you to take home? Okay, <laughs> a little fancy for myself then. <laughs> Brooks, uh, is it possible mm. your boyfriend does not believe these are chips? but instead likes to annoy you by calling them chips, a thing I, not exactly that, but similar, do to my wife all the time. (laughs) Is it possible your boyfriend loves chips and you never have chips and this is his way of passive aggressively sort of (laughs) guilting you into go, "Mm, these are tasty chips. And as a raw fettuccine eater myself, I can tell you it's not a a good chew. You do it, and you put it in your mouth, and your six-year-old brain thinks it'll turn a fettuccine in the heat of your mouth. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It just doesn't work like that. Brooks? Yes. Did you eat all your boyfriend's chips? (laughs) (laughs) No, but he does bring that up every time he loudly crunches on them next to me. (laughs) Wait, brings 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 what what up? up? That I don't have any chips. That's it, then, Brooks. That's the answer. All right. Brooks, we've got to buy this. We've you got to buy some chips, Brooks. <laughs> Somewhere in this audience, Brooks' boyfriend is going, yes. yes. <laughs> and now, follow up question. And now I shall have chips. <laughs> follow up question. Good. I don't know where to get chips from. <laughs> have you ever seen your boyfriend with a pot of boiling water <laughs> cutting the bristles off a broom into it, saying, "We're out of fettuccine." <laughs> Oh, Brooks, here's what you do. Brooks, Brooks, his boyfriend. Plug your ears. Okay, go buy a bag of chips. Dump them all on the garbage. Put some raw fettuccine in it. Put a chip clip back on it. Put it back in the pantry. And wait. And he's going to think he's in like a weird Twilight Zone episode where there have never been chips. (laughs) Never been chips. Wait until you... And then what's that? You're boiling? Doritos. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Wait until your boyfriend starts making fettuccine if you're real and walk over and smell the pop and say, mmm, chip soup. (laughs) My favorite. (laughs) Delicious. Does it help? Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Please go ahead. Luke, what's up? Luke. Hey. Hell yeah. Get casual with that I really enjoy your question. (laughs) Thank you. First of all, Luke Baker, sophomore at School of Mass Communication and Journalism at Texas State University. Yeah. <laughs> Is this uh, your LinkedIn? <laughs> yeah, but I gotta tell Actually, you, that shit's broken bad for us in the past. I thought you were gonna be like, my SoundCloud is... <laughs> Just ask the question, Luke. I will right. warn you, if you're about to do that, the last time it happened, the person was booed so hard they sunk into the mantle of the earth. <laughs> Let that be a lesson to all of you. It was fucking brutal, and I loved every second of it. <laughs> All we right. will do nothing to stop it. We will do nothing team. to stop it. <laughs> Thank you for warning me. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, my question is, uh, what is charcuterie? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because... Uh, you don't need to clarify okay, beyond that. Really. I would be interested to see why. Um, that word's been kind of haunting me for the past month. <laughs> I've just heard it so many times. Um, Where? I just... I don't, it, just like in passing. Mostly menus just, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Not just like on park benches and stuff. I, I, I don't do, just like in casual conversation, yeah. I've never really had the heart to like be like, okay, what is that? So I figured you guys would do Do you have any 
any clue. Like, Don't easily. you fucking lie to me, Luke. How much do you actually know about charcuterie? <laughs> Literally nothing at all. Okay, Luke, okay. I'll help. Uh, let me take a crack at it. It's cheese and meat. All right. Well, uh, but also sometimes wait. it could be almonds and it be olives. Almonds, and it could be a pickle, and it could be jam. Honeycomb of Honeycomb some sort. Is sometimes it on there. It could be crusty bread. I think it's... Whatever the fuck they got laying around. <laughs> yeah, it's a fancy word for leftovers. <laughs> that are easy yes. to make. If it, it took work to make little ones, that's an appetizer or an hors d'oeuvre. If, <laughs> if they just cut up something from Pepperidge Farm, that you got charcuterie going, my friend. What's the, one, what's the one with the little vegetables? What's that called? A plate of little vegetables is called? Crudite. Crudite. Crudite is vegetables. Charcuterie is cheese and meat. Charcuterie has vegetables on it too sometimes. Listen, let's dial in. Let's start with what isn't. What isn't charcuterie? A car, a A child's laughter. A child's laughter. Child's laughter. The air we breathe, the The, stage I'm sitting on. A dream of your grandparents. Yes. A memory of summer's past. (laughs) These things, well, wait. A memory of summer's past could be charcuterie. Yeah, my grandma can remember charcuterie charcuterie. from the past. Also, your grandparents might have dreamed of charcuterie. I don't know. And a child might be laughing at charcuterie. Charcuterie, Okay. When <laughs> that's some funny charcuterie they'd say. <laughs> when a bread becomes too hard to safely consume, it is now charcuterie. When when a thin meat is deemed too flavorless, it has become charcuterie. When and a, room temperature. When a cheese has been deemed to be too flavorful, now it's charcuterie. Are you following me? I get it. There's imagine. <laughs> Uh, when you go and you have to work at a restaurant, you go get your food handler's license, you learn about the safe range of temperature. Yes, the danger zone. There's a secret gauge they don't tell you about, and it is, when does bread become so hard, now it's charcuterie, baby. And also, it should be clear, these can't be loose things. One piece of bread is not charcuterie. One piece of cheese is not charcuterie. One Put piece them- of meat, no. Put it all in the same area. Maybe it's like a hunk of wood. Maybe it's a stone slab. Maybe it's someone's face. I don't know. Now, now it's charcuterie. Another big determining factor. If it costs $30, that's a charcuterie. That's a charcuterie. The, if it's complimentary. At the $6 offering at Applebee's is a ham party. <laughs> or, is, as it's called on the so menu, much. a ham slam. A ham slam. <laughs> That explains so much because the reason I was pitching myself earlier is because I'm not worth thirty dollars yet. So oh, yes. <laughs> no, but no, 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 don't all that. That's a fucking no. goal. Yeah. That's an aspiration. Also, I remember the first time I ate charcuterie, I went, Oh, that cheese is wow. Yeah. Taste I went, taste that, taste that, taste that. It's really pungent, huh? But I've made it because it was thirty dollars that I had. That's the thing. Charcuterie is like the noted excess of food. Because it's literally like, hey, do you want a delicious appetizer or like a plate of actual food you're going to eat? No, no. Give me a big hunk of wood with some leavens on it. Sure. For $30. For $30. If you run, if you own a, if there's, I know there's a food scene, Austin, I know it because I live here. If you're a restaurateur, restaurant owner, please, Christ, do this because it's the best idea I've ever had in my life. If your restaurant sells charcuterie, and it costs $30, and it's got flavorless ham and stinky cheese on it. It should also come with a sticker that said, I had charcuterie today. <laughs> <laughs> they put that on you. You go to any job interview in the fucking city. What are your, what are your qualifications? I have, I have $30 to throw around. <laughs> My teeth are hard enough to chew through the firmest breads. <laughs> Luke, does that help? That helps me immensely. Thank Excellent. you so much. Excellent. Right, thank thank you. you, Luke. All right. And we'll thank you. On. Yeah, we got one more. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hey, what's your name? Camille. Hi, Camille. Hi, Camille. Camille. Hi. Um, so m- my question, I guess, was at work a while ago, we were all kind of like reminiscing about how fun college was and fun stuff we do with our friends. And... I told my coworkers about the inside joke, me and my best friend, who we lived together for three years, had where when one person would come home, whoever was already at home would pretend they had died. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you find your best friend's dead body, you have to react like you fe- excuse me, found and murdered. Camille got worked up for a second. It's 
hilarious. Yeah, sure. Uh, now I, yeah. my coworkers did get really weird though. Well, because here's no. Here's, what's your What's your question? I just. I know they think it's weird, but they tried to laugh it off like, oh, uh, yeah. It, well, that also might be because human it. beings are awkward. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Camille, let me say this. I don't think the game itself is weird, but the thing that struck me about it is the chance that you would get halfway through doing a very dramatic, like, oh, oh, no. Oh, God, wait. <laughs> oh, ah, uh, Yeah, that's a, that's a game you win. Until you lose. <laughs> and then you ain't gonna win it again. But you will get A's for the rest of the semester, which is nice. <laughs> is that, I've heard that, I don't know. I just heard it in a movie. I mean, it's like a fun game between us. We both know Let, we're playing I'll, it. I'll this more than once. In your defense, everybody here, when you heard about the rules of this game, you may say out loud, oh, ghoulish. I want everybody to just round of applause if your mind didn't immediately start racing of the scenarios you would concoct. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. So maybe, Camille, the reason that your coworkers reacted like that is because they were distracted thinking about how they would fake being dead later. Yeah. How they wish they had done it because it sounds fun. <laughs> yeah. Whew. I would just wrap myself up in mummy stuff. That would get a good scare, wouldn't it? I would put a whole pile of me underneath a magician's trick. Like the prestige. <laughs> <laughs> you got me again, Justin. It's a lot of expense, and it's worth every penny. I'm going to have to talk to Nikolai Tesla. <laughs> I would get one of my bones out of my body <laughs> and just sort of put it on the kitchen counter and then stay at a hotel for a month. <laughs> I would slowly, over many months, collect some pints of my own blood until I have enough to fill the whole house. I would, I would stab myself with a knife, but a bad stab. <laughs> Wait, bad in... <laughs> that looked good. That looked like, oh, he dead. But I wouldn't be dead. And yeah. it would just be... I would miss the liver by I would inch. kill my twin <laughs> yes <laughs> androids that's the end uh, Camille does that help your game kicks ass congratulations, yeah, congratulations. Thank Camille you. your Thank game you. is awesome uh, and you Austin are awesome thank you so much for being so kind to us uh, we really appreciate it. You can turn the lights off because it's terrifying. Yeah, um, and just shut so them off. A couple of things real quick. First, um, if you haven't already, there's uh, posters out, out, out on the lobby that, uh, listen, we have a lot of really amazing designers that we work with uh, for the live shows. This is one of the it's like, fucking best designs so ever. And you should, rolls. So you did a great job and uh, you should support her. Similarly, there's some copies, if you haven't got one already, of both uh, the Adventure Zone graphic novel book one and the Sawbones book out uh, in the lobby. Maybe. They are, they are signed. Um, so if you want to check those out, you can do that. Thank you to... I, this, I was commenting on this backstage. I do not know that I've ever performed on a stage where I have seen so many shows beforehand. This theater and ACL in general fucking rules. This city is so lucky to have it. Uh, I, I am lucky to, I'm lucky to live in Austin because of this place. I've seen more concerts here than like any other place in my life. So the fact that we're performing on the stage is buck wild. It's a beautiful theater. Thank you all so much for having Thank us. Thank you to American hero, Paul Saborn. Thank you to Paul. Paul. Please enjoy the music of Paul and Storm. Thank you, Rack on Tour, Clint McElroy. Yeah, for yeah. your great work. Thanks to Wonderful, a fantastic podcast that you should enjoy if you do not already. Um, and thank you to our various family members uh, who weren't included in the two previous things we just said uh, for being here to support us uh, and, and travel with us and do the shows. And I have one last one. Uh, uh, every year, uh, our listeners get together, and there's this list called Empty Stockings that Huntington, West Virginia, newspaper Herald Dispatch puts out, and it is all the people who have things that they uh, 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 wishes for Christmas for kids that aren't going to have anything. And every year, our listeners uh, look at that list and 
burn it to the ground. They with fucking destroy it. Generosity, and we would. That's a weird way of putting it, but uh, if you if you could help I'm with that, I'm gonna fuck that list up. If if you could help with that, mb mbamangels.com is the place to go. You can claim a gift. You can donate money. Whatever you can do. Uh, and really and when we say when we say wish list, we mean stuff like. They need socks. Yeah, or, socks or a mattress. Or I wasn't going to get into it because it's kind of like a live show and I want everybody to have oh. a great time. But yeah, I mean, it is very sad. Thank you, Travis. Poverty is sad. Hey, who wants a final Yahoo? It's a real ripper. Yeah, fart it out, bud. Well, thank you. Uh, 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 we thanked everyone. John Roderick and John Lauren. Roderick and Max well. Fun. Y'all got it. Good work, y'all. Let's rip it up with a funny <laughs> fucking final Yahoo, baby. <laughs> James Cockwell sent this in. Thank you, James. It's, it's Yahoo Anonymous. Yeah, Yahoo. So I'm going to call him. Bill asks, is buying calcium-enriched milk like bone insurance? <laughs> my name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hey, it's Jana Varney of the JV Club podcast, and I am so excited to be joining Maximum Fun. If you're not yet familiar with the JV Club, it's a podcast with me and some of my favorite women, and in the summer, men, as we explore the highs and lows of our terrible teenage years into our adult lessons. For example, hear about Allison Bree's humiliating moment at a gymnastics competition. Experience the shame of a knocked out tooth with Jamila Jamil, or drop in as John Hamm imagines what would happen if Bambi met Godzilla. So join me and all my once awkward, often still awkward friends every Thursday by subscribing to the JV Club on MaximumFun.org.